A concrete heart which no longer beats. The current state of the city centre of Britain's second city, Birmingham, and the effect the change has had on the homeless. This film will contain input from members of the public of Birmingham and students from the local university who will be graduating in 2018. This is a 15 minute visual presentation using footage taken from a walk around Birmingham. The brief that was set for this question allowed the opportunity to research and determine the question in which this presentation will study. After studying several literary sources, the question which the visual, this visual presentation will argue and present is, Birmingham, with the changes to the Bullring, the new Grand Central Station and the demolition of the Madden Library, how has this changed Birmingham's identity and the possible effect it has had on the homeless? This question was chosen because it highlights Birmingham's rapid growth and a sign of change, but also saw a rise in the growing problem in every growing city, homelessness. Was the changes that have happened to the three landmark brutalist pieces of architecture? Did this have an effect on the rough sleepers of Birmingham? And what does it mean for the brutalist identity of the Birmingham of old? This is the argument this presentation will present, and at the end will possibly lead others to ponder this burning question. To start to understand the question put before us. Firstly, what is meant by Birmingham's concrete heart? What is it? For the purpose of this presentation, it refers to three main pieces of architecture. They are the Bullring, New Street Station, and the now demolished Madden Library. What is also important is to gain an understanding of the context within the city of Birmingham itself. Birmingham itself is still and has gone through a process of architectural change, a metamorphosis if you will. It is understanding that many people knew Birmingham as a city with a brutalist architectural style and language, especially during the time period of the post-war. To show the change that is being discussed, it is necessary to mention several case studies. As was mentioned before, New Street Station, the growth of the Birmingham City University campus, the Boring, and the recently approved plans for the Curzon Street Station, which is part of the HS2 project. Moving forward, it is important to look at new architecture, which has changed in the undeveloped area of Birmingham, namely the city centre campus of Birmingham City University, as well as the plans for the Curzon Street Station. The new campus, which has developed extremely quickly in the past few years, started with the new main university building, Parkside, which is connected to the previously already built Millennium Point building. Also which has come up in recent years is the Curzon building and several other buildings including the near completed conservatoire nearing, nearing the vision put forward by the East Side project, which is also part of the big city plan set up by the Birmingham City Council which brings a quick mention to the new Curzon Street station, which will be built next to the campus and lead to the city centre connecting the two areas, and also bring in a statement of the new architectural language in which the city is obtaining. Now moving on to the first of the three pieces of architecture which represent what this presentation is describing as Birmingham's concrete heart. New Street Station, which is now known as Grand Central, and shows a great change in the Birmingham city cityscape. The old New Street Station, with its rectangular concrete facade and could be described as blending with the city's office buildings with a monochromatic colouring of white and dark tinted windows. This is in stark contrast to what the Grand Central is now, a giant chrome encased station which some people describe as if a UFO has landed in the city centre. This was most probably done to connect more with the ball ring. A change of the same degree also happened to the ball ring, which is in the 1980s was in a similar state as that as New Street Station. The old ball ring was similar to New Street Station, being a flat concrete rectangular block with the present, with the pre present rotunda being the only drastic change in the skyline. Now the ball ring is recognised as recognised in the skyline of Birmingham as much as the rotunda with the curvy shape of the Selfridges store with a facade of discs. With this 
these two case studies, it shows two examples of brutalism architecture undergoing massive change. Discussing the topic with a tutor from the local university, it was agreed that these two pieces of brutalist architecture have been replaced what was called steel shells. Now, what was all quickly touched upon in this introductory sec section was to introduce in a summarised way the change that Birmingham has undertaken to the first two pieces of brutalist architecture, which has been updated moving on from the brutalist nature in the past half a century and is still undergoing. This leads to the main focus point of this presentation, with the destruction of a monu monument of Birmingham, the Central Library, and the veil which was lifted with the development of the Paradise Corner. The reason f it was necessary for one of these pieces of architecture mentioned, the Madden Library, to have to be the main focus of this presentation is because of the difference between all three pieces. What is being said is that New Street and the Bull Ring stayed in the same site but had a facelift, to put it bluntly, while the Madden Library was torn down to make room for new projects. As was mentioned beforehand, the Bull Ring was the first to take on a new form and move away from the post-war brutalist architecture, replacing it with a steel shell architecture of the new age. This was followed by the new design which transformed New Street Station into the Grand Central Station, beginning the process of Birmingham removing itself from a brutalist identity. It was decided that the next phase of what could be described as a precise operation to remove the final piece of Birmingham's concrete heart. Now describing these three case studies as to concrete heart might sound presumptuous, but the reason for this is the position of the three pieces of architecture the Bull Ring, New Street Station and the Old Central Library. In the time after the Bull Ring was redesigned and new street plans had been approved for the new Grand Central, a battle had been undertaken by the English Heritage to save the Old Central Library by getting it accepted as a Grade II listed building, but failed. The new library had been built and many people adored the new design. It was decided that the old Madden Library must be demolished to make room mm -hmm. for new builds. An article released at the time by John Clenday, the secretary of the Rubble Club, a society of architects who have lived to see their work destroyed. He describes the Madden Library as a concrete masterpiece and a striking landmark in the Birmingham city centre. As was previously mentioned, the English heritage failed in its bid to get a grade two listing. In the same article, a spokesperson believed many local people will be disappointed to see it lost. They also mentioned how these buildings from the post-war era of Britain should be celebrated and was not sure demolishing them was the right thing to go. But why say this? Could they be referring to the connection to the 20th century or the very real realisation that one of the last brutalist buildings in Birmingham skyline would soon be nothing but a pile of rubble? After a bit of time standing near the area in which the library once stood, it was possible to approach several members of the public to discuss the old man library. In the group which was asked, it became apparent that some people agreed with the article, saying it was missed in the context of the city, but then people who hadn't used it when it was open mostly said the same thing in which they preferred the new library. Now the opinions of the public are very important, but most may not have probably understood the architectural aspects of the question put to them. So it was also an option but the same question to architectural prof professionals as well as students of the subject. The question put before them was similar to the main question of the presentation, that they feel that Birmingham had torn out its concrete heart with the demolition of the Madden Library. As was hoped for, it was a much more split and diverse set of opinions and answers to the question that was posed to the students, who were close to graduating and several who had lived in Birmingham for much or all of their lives. Of course, as was expected, more comments were towards saying they were glad that the Madden Library was torn down. And even though there was a, they were a fan of brutalist style, their opinions were more along the lines of saying its demolition opened up the city centre. This side of the argument is backed up by shots made by photographs and articles showing the view which had been not been available since it was built, namely the view from Centenary Square to the clock tower in the city centre. Now... 
Not too surprising was the background of those people which missed the library, or the ones who had grown up in Birmingham, or the surrounding area. In particular, going as far to say the Madden Library was a symbol of Birmingham, and was described as a true public library. Describing the Madden Library as a symbol is much the same as calling it a landmark, which had been mentioned previously. As well as what was said, how the Madden Library brought together the spaces of Birmingham City Centre, as well as the people, and described how the workers of the library were accommodating to the homeless that slept rough in Birmingham, and allowed them to sleep, and even would allow them to use the facilities to try and help them get back on their feet, which links to calling the Madden a true public library. As was previously mentioned, it was important to not only understand this comment, but actually meet someone with this experience, as it is pivotal to come to terms with the second part of the question, which was proposed at the start of this presentation. When the Madden Library was torn down, did it lift the mask on the homeless problem which had grown in Birmingham? And was a similar effect approached when the changes to the boring and new street station By reading certain sources, this was much harder to determine from writing alone, and a more personal approach was required during the research for this presentation. The explanation behind this wording is that it is used in the previous sentence. It is due to the experience one can get when they walk through the previous era of the Madden Library, in particular the ironically named Paradise Corner. The word ironically is used due to the state of the area and the exposure of the day-to-day -day of someone who sleeps rough during the day at any one time during the day when you approach the area you can see and count at least 15 rough sleepers and the irony comes into play when you walk under the site and many of these homeless in an attempt to get out of the elements they sleep under the sign reading paradise as was mentioned before it was said that many homeless were invited into the madden library as an escape from the tree streets and a chance to sleep or look for ways to get back on their feet it can be assumed all of these people were affected by the destruction of the Madden Library, but how can anyone be sure of this? The assumption is, of course, the area now of how close these people are to the former Madden Library, but to assume this without approaching these people and asking if their already hard life was further affected by the Madden Library being demolished. Within the short time spent with one of the homeless, they mentioned that their life had been affected by the old library being torn down saying they had lost more of a shelter, and said they had been grateful for the staff, but even with the old library, they were still homeless. With the talk, and from a quote from a head of a local homeless charity in Digbeth, saying yes, the demolition had had an effect, and alongside an increase in visible homeless on the streets, she went on to say even with the effect, it did not fully explain the rise. As mentioned before, even though the main focus is on the Madden Library and the Paradise Corner, the areas connecting Grand Central and the Boring have seen rough sleepers looking for shelter and a place to feel safe. This is a topic which could fill another 15 minutes, but it was felt that it was important to mention as it is an important part of city life which many turn a blind eye to. It seems with the information provided, any conclusion is a matter of opinion than anything else. Throughout this film, several ideas and aspects of Birmingham have been discussed, starting from de describing certain pieces of architecture, which in the time felt to represent Birmingham's brutalist concrete heart, and the recent changes the Bullring and the now Grand Central Station both undergoing reno renovations to end up transformed into new pieces of architecture to change Birmingham's skyline and identity. Of course, this wasn't the main ideal behind this film, it was just to hopefully provide suitable context. It was then moved on to discuss the drastic changes, even with the new faces of the boring and the new Grand Central Station, to also discuss the demolition of the old Madden Library. It was discussed the effect that the demolition had on the city centre itself and how it was possible that because of this, the amount of homeless had become more visible on the street. Throughout the research, the talks with the public and students of architecture, 
and during the typing up of the script and filming of this film. Looking back at the question put forward at the start of the film, did Birmingham lose its concrete heart with the demolition of the Madden Library as well as the changes undergone by the Boring and New Street Station? And did this lift the mask on the growing homeless problem which is happening within Birmingham? Well, it can be said that Birmingham's history will always be that of brutalist nature, with the change and or dem demolition of the free of Birmingham's main brutalist architecture. It could be very much argued that Birmingham's concrete heart beat its last beat with the destruction of the Madden Library. And finally, yes, it is very much obvious that the loss of the Madden Library, for better or worse, has shown an increase in homeless people on the streets, but this could be necessary to expose a growing problem and bring light. Birmingham's past will always be that of concrete and the future seems to be a steel shell.